Hi, I hope you're all doing good. So it's been quite a long time since we had a lecture on a board. So let's take this as an opportunity and discuss NEET MDS 2019 question paper in as many parts as possible. Because last year we tried to compact all questions into our three sessions. I know it's very challenging to go across such uh, uh, videos because lot many points in limited time uh, available. So what we'll do this time is we'll try to divide the videos into several parts so that in each part we'll discuss set of questions, set of 10 or 15 questions so that we can elaborate on key as well as explanations and moreover it will be easy and convenient for you to choose any part of your choice and most importantly each video will be of very short duration comparatively. I think that will be more attractive, isn't it? and more appealing so we'll start with our paper discussion also based on the topics which you have given me so we'll try to discuss those topics in brief so starting with the following topics father gill's disease so father gill's disease is the other name for trigeminal neuralgia as you all know so it was named after john father gill who has given the first elaborate and right description of trigeminal neuralgia way back in 1773 right so father gill's disease is the other name for trigeminal neuralgia next oblique ridge so as you know any ridge is a linear extension and a linear elevated uh, surface on a tooth uh, for example uh, take transverse ridge oblique ridge so any ridge as such is a linear elevation as the name itself indicates it is oblique in shape which is obviously present on maxillary first molar so if you look into the oblique ridge extension it extends from the mesopalatal cusp to distal buccal cusp in case of maxillary first molar isn't it so the largest cusp being mesopalatal next largest being mesobuccal followed by distopalatal and distobuccal being the smallest cusp in case of maxillary first molar we're talking about functional cusps cusp of carabel is obviously smaller than all this so oblique ridge is something which extends from the mesopalatal to distobuccal cusp so these kind of questions we can easily remember and recollect if you have the image in your mind isn't it now moving on to who themes for 2018, see every year April 7th is uh, celebrated as World Health Day, is observed as World Health Day. So this year, World Health Day, on the eve of World Health Day, the team which was selected is Universal Health Coverage, Everyone, Everywhere. So uh, celebrating 70th anniversary, WHO celebrating its 70th anniversary this year, they have declared Universal Health Coverage UHC as this year's theme with an objective of promoting health and making health accessible to each and every person on the planet. Health for all concept, right? So Universal Health Coverage, everyone, everywhere is this year's WHO theme. And coming to Odland bodies, named after Odland, a person who discovered them for the first time. So these are present in superficial spinous and granular layer. So these Odland bodies are subcellular structures, 200-300 nanometers in diameter, and they represent lysosomes, right? So we'll discuss in detail about these Odland bodies again in another uh, separate video, right? So just mark this point. So Odland bodies represent a special type of epidermal lysosomes. And as I said, they're present in upper spinous and granular layer of epidermis. Now coming to bed sore, you know, we have something called as pressure ulcers. Pressure ulcer is also called as decubitus ulcer or bed sore. Decubitus is nothing but lying down position as you know. So these pressure ulcers are usually seen in certain areas with bone being the underlying structure. So usually over the bone there will be uh, there can be potential for more amount of pressure acting it can be either compressive or shear kind of pressure or a combination of both leading to ischemia necrosis and whatnot so bed sores these are a kind of pressure ulcers right so also you can make a note that 
in case of pressure ulcers there are specific type of injuries that break down skin and underlying tissues when an area of skin is placed under constant pressure so there can be shear compression or a combination of both these pressures and the most commonly uh, involved areas or the areas that are particularly prone to pressure sores are those that cover bony areas for example occiput trochanters sacrum malleoli and heels so some examples are sites where you can uh, see these uh, bed sores or pressure ulcers more frequently right now coming to testosterone so testosterone is produced by you can have uh, i mean different uh, cells as options so this testosterone is mainly produced by Leydig cells Leydig cells which are present in testes so these Leydig cells are polyhedral with large prominent nuclei eosinophilic cytoplasm and lipid filled vesicles right so Leydig cells will be more appropriate answer so cells which produce almost 90 to 95 percent of testosterone and coming to quorum sensing so quorum sensing is a means of communication between different groups of bacteria, different population of bacteria. So gene expression or activation of gene expression or regulation of gene expression is possible because of quorum sensing. And this quorum sensing is possible because the bacteria produce certain chemical signal molecules called as autoinducers. Because of these autoinducers, there can be alterations in gene expression as well. So why do you need this gene expression alterations or why do you need this kind of communication? Because this is how a, array, a wide array of important physiological functions in bacteria are being controlled ranging from the population density or it can be sporulation, motility, conjugation, competence, symbiosis, virulence. So all this wide array of physiological functions are being controlled via these gene expressions which is possible between different bacteria via quorum sensing. Right? So quorum sensing is a means of communication. Just keep that in mind. And also, just at this point, gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria use quorum sensing communication circuits to regulate diverse array of physiological activities as we discussed now, right? So in brief, anyways, in post-graduation, you're going uh, to study these aspects in depth, right? And coming to reverse smoking, one of the most commonly asked questions, not just in entrance, but also in viva, if you remember, nodal medicine. So this reverse smoking is uh, widely prevalent in India, Singapore, and some other countries. But in India, it is Andhra Pradesh, in specific, Srikakulam district. And if you want some stats pertaining to uh, the Srikakulam district, the percentage incidence or female to a male ratio, I'll just give you some information. So there was one study, house-to-house -house survey of oral cancer and precancerous conditions comprising around more than 10,000 villagers among which 43.8% were reverse smokers and surprisingly female to male ratio uh, of having this habit of reverse smoking is 1.7 is to 1 so almost uh, twice the number uh, females are having this habit of reverse smoking than males so the bottom line is it's widely seen in females from a specific district Srikakulam in Andhra Pradesh and finally we still have alarm clock headache and C3B so alarm clock headache as you know spinopalatine ganglion neuralgia so paroxysm intense sudden outburst of unilateral pain without any trigger zones this is very very important usually seen in the areas of eyes or maxilla beneath the zygoma base of the nose sometimes spreading back to occipital region and characteristically in some patients there can be uh, this sudden paroxysm of unilateral pain at a specific timing early in the morning at a specific timing and usually this pain lasts for 15 minutes to several hours and then disappears spontaneously remember there are no trigger zones in case of alarm clock headache right spinopalatine ganglion neuralgia fine and finally c3b we have discussed this n number of times in our e classes test series and study club discussions so c3b a component largest component of complement 3 so this is an important component of innate immunity and is also a potent 
opsonin. So as you know, opsonization is a process of facilitating phagocytosis. So these particles just go and coat on various immune complexes, foreign bodies, various foreign cells, bacteria, virus, whatnot, facilitating phagocytosis. So C3B is a potent opsonin. Right? So this is in brief few topics pertaining to this specific video. See, in the rest of the videos, we'll try to cover as many topics as we can. But as I said, we'll try to have limited topics per video so that it will be easy for you to follow and to revise if at all you're planning for NEAT MDS 2020. I hope it's clear.